guys, it's Mrs. Hand. I'm going to read Arthur Goes to Camp today. I'm not going, said Arthur. Arthur, you'll love camp. Think of all the new friends you'll make, said his mother. I have fond memories of my own camp days, said Arthur's father. Camp will teach you about the great outdoors. I'm not going. Oh, boy. Arthur was at the camp bus stop the next morning. Buster was standing with a new kid. He's got a hundred comic books in his footlocker, squealed Buster, pointing to the brain. Francine was there, too. You guys better watch out. Tent three is full of bats and snakes, she yelled out the window. It's going to be just like school. The girls against the boys, thought Arthur. When the bus passed Camp Horsewater, even the girls stopped teasing. Look at those guys said Buster. They're going to be in great shape for our scavenger hunt. No wonder they always win. That's no camp. That's a zoo, said Arthur. <laughs> this is Dear Mom and Dad. I'm not at camp yet. I'm very homesick and I miss you very much. Please write soon. Love, Arthur. Things were different at Camp Meadow Croak. Well, at least for the girls. I'll do my best to make this a wonderful summer for you, said the girls' counselor, Becky. Even Muffy looked eager when she pulled up in her limousine. Where do I plug in my air conditioner? She hollered. The boys' counselor was a different story. Attention, men, line up, barked Rocky. Stand up straight. Suck in those guts. I've never seen such a soft, flabby bunch. No dessert for you men this summer. Oh, my goodness. Muffy had brought her own dessert. After a dinner that tasted like macaroni and fleas and worm burgers, she opened her trunk. The girls dug in. At bedtime, Muffy discovered the tent had no electricity. How will I brush my teeth? She moaned. The boys were too tired from all their running and push-ups to think of brushing their teeth. They crawled under the covers. Arthur screamed, Amphibians! How fascinating! said the brain. No, they're frogs, said Buster. Just wait until we get a hold of those girls, said Arthur. Here's another note up here. It says, Dear Mom and Dad, camp is terrible. Just like I thought. The food is bad. I'm still very homesick. Please come and get me. Love, Arthur. Let's see you do this, dead man's float, Buster. Have a good trip, brain. Hey, four eyes need new glasses? Oh, boy. Forget about the frog, said the girl. You guys better worry about the softball game instead. The girls were beating the boys at everything. Disgusting, said Rocky. I'll never live this down. In fact, all that week, the girls were great campers. They built campfires, pitched tents, tied knots, identified plants. All the boys could find was poison ivy. Rocky hid in his cabin. Arthur wrote postcards home. There's another one. Dear Mom and Dad, I miss you and I cried when I read your letter. When are you guys coming to get me? Camp is gross. Love, Arthur. Arthur had a lot to write about. The frogs in his bed were bad enough, but now really weird things were happening. The girls thought the boys threw a smoke bomb into their tent. The boys thought the girls took all of their clothes. But one night, everybody heard strange noises and footsteps in the woods. It had to be someone else. This is Dear Mom and Dad. This place gives me the creeps. I've got to get out of here. Love, Arthur. Everyone was too scared to tell ghost stories. We have to do something, said the brain. Let's stand watch tonight and find out what's going on. So that's it. Camp Horsewater, whispered Buster. They've been trying to scare us all along. Don't worry, we'll fix them tomorrow at the scavenger hunt, said the brain. I've got a plan, but we'll need the girls' help. Arthur had a plan, too. He decided to run away. It says, Dear Mom and Dad, I decided not to wait for you to come and get me. I think I can remember how to get home. Love, Arthur. <laughs> Welcome to the annual Meadow Croak Horse Water Scavenger Hunt. The next morning, Becky read the list of things to find and be back at sunset, she said. The brain nudged Francine. Time for phase one of the plan, he whispered. Watch out for bears. The woods are full of them, she yelled to the horse water kids. They just laughed. Nobody noticed Arthur sneaking away. Oh, up there. He's ready to go home. Everybody was in the woods looking for things. Strange noises started coming from the bushes. Suddenly, a huge furry animal burst from the underbrush. A bear! Hollered Muffy and Buster and Francine, trying not to giggle.
think that's Muffy's coat. When the Meadow Croak team started hunting again, the bear helped too. How can you wear this coat, Muffy? The brain's voice floated out from the fur. It's so hot. It's never too hot for Mink, Muffy grinned. Our plan really worked, but we still haven't found the flashlight. And has anyone seen Arthur? said Buster. It doesn't matter if the horse water team never comes down from the tree. We can't win if we don't have everything, groaned Francine. Hmm. Meanwhile, it was getting dark and Arthur was lost. He heard strange noises. Were they footsteps? Arthur reached into his backpack for his flashlight and snapped it on. A flashlight! We won! Three cheers for Arthur. Finish. Here's his last note. Dear Mom and Dad, the scavenger hunt was great. Camp is great. I want to come back next year. Love, Arthur. <laughs> I'm glad he changed his mind. Uh, I'll put all the stuff in the description box about ARs, testing and everything, and I'll see you next time. Bye!